Hello and welcome to Let's Compose episode 3, a series where I break down my composition process into digestible YouTube videos. In today's episode, I'll be working on the build-up. I think we're set for a nice build-up now. Adding a mysterious chord. And bring back the opening ostinato. So you know how this works by now. Let's go. I've been struggling with the um, what I muted here to bring back this staccato figure there in the end. But I think what I want to do is leave space for that flute thing and maybe repeat that a couple times and then in the end have this only come back for the later notes. So here we still need you. Or maybe also have it uh, like just repeat here. Dun, 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 dun. Might work. The uh, double bass is there. I still have to get used to the fact that we are in B flat minor here. I still have it kind of in my head in uh, in D minor. <laughs> This one stands out a little bit because it's a bit high. So if I just mute the upper one and then let it come back there. And we need to change the velocities. So it is dun 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 dun. we move towards that one. And I'm gonna make the first one a bit louder so it has a bit more emphasis. And then here I can also add some brass, maybe bassoons. I'm just gonna add one here, just for some variation. And let's do the same thing here. <laughs> I need to just need to fix it with these strings because this is just temporary now. And then some movement. Let's see how this works together. Needs to be a little bit more sinister, maybe in the double basses, or I'll leave the cellos out in the end. But let's just try it this way. Maybe I need to have the tremolo back for some sinister. Then violas because of the register. We hate that apart from the fact that it was a little bit loud maybe i don't need this to be in like a measured tremolo i think i will alternate it with regular shorts so this is I think I prefer that. Now everything is a little bit too loud, but I think I like where the orchestration is. Just a little idea maybe for the horns somewhere there. There was one idea I had I wanted to try and the second one is that we go back to this, you guessed it, wire chords. I really don't like the fourth. I 
think we want to already start with these longer notes and then slowly um, build up the volume so we get I prefer that. It's very low. <laughs> and then soft horns, that's where this line needs to go. Just too loud. Maybe this needs to be later. That shimmery flute, then it alternates with horn, and then here we go. But this comes back, and then we have this, and then we move somewhere else. Some more emphasis on those. Also answers the question where should this move up? That is on the last two beats. And now it's too loud, it needs to be higher up there. Uh, maybe this is too early, maybe this needs to be like in the second or the third time. And then after that, it can continue potentially. Just move it for now. We'll worry about it later. Um, let's just try something. And then what's the second voice? So this is also a good technique to have thirds in your runs. You start on the root and the fifth, but then an octave lower. So you start on the fourth, and then in the first step you move the lower voice from, in this case, F to A flat, and then B flat. So on the third note of the run, you have the root and the third. So from there, it does go on the scale. And then it looks like this. Wait, there's zero. I have a bassoon there as well. And I also want to try how it sounds in Marcato, so I can have like a bum uh, short on the last notes. I don't like it in the bassoons. I could try to do the entire chords. Yeah, like I said, I want to try it in Marcato, just to see what it sounds like. Now the other one. Okay, I prefer this, but I don't think I want it in the bassoon. But you were doing the same thing. And you were, I don't know what you were doing. <laughs> and maybe this also needs to be in another voice in the flute, so it really is, the flute's just... And then afterwards we have things in the lower register happening and then here we go back to the blues. I think that's what needs to happen. Maybe this needs to go up. And one thing I wanted to do as well was have the bass clarinet do with the uh, low strings. softer okay i like that this now goes to a lower instrument but it still feels a little bit empty yeah like i said before this needs to be not a melodic section but kind of like an interlude which will then build up to choir melody i have in the end somewhere this one do, do, do. <laughs> But 
first I want to have it like a little bit over a pedal tone. I like that uh, we managed to include the ending of the phrase now. So this will repeat a couple of times and then I'll go back to... I want to build it up, but I don't want to start it too quiet. So I'm now just trying, trying out different things, see which ones work, and then figure out afterwards where we will put everything. I have moved over some parts to here for the repetition, but I kind of like how empty it sounds there. So what I could also do is just have the um, flutes. <laughs> Now it sounds too empty. So it's somewhere in between. Let's get these back involved. Mute this for now. Okay, I think I prefer that and we'll leave this for later or remove it entirely. We'll see where it goes. I want some more emphasis in this um, that line. So I think I'll put it in muted horns. So this accent goes with the and I think this will just be an accent there for the tremolo. Maybe this doesn't need to be a tremolo, but like a as well. I immediately thought of something for second violins. Just a tremolo on this B and way softer. And I think I like it. Like I said, I want it empty, but not too empty. Yeah, I think I want that there after all. And And I want the clarinets to be supporting of that harp sound. So I think I'll put this a little softer as well. I want to expand on this flute part a little bit. Uh, how I want to do that is by hinting at the melody that's coming. So I think a little movement like this. Let's see if it would already work. color it's e maybe you know how we do it with this these things just try them out okay i like the e there It fits. It's very chromatic, but chromaticism and action music go great together. Okay, then I can double that with choir, but I will need a more subtle choir. And then afterwards, from here, maybe we'll get... Not sure if it's in this choir, but... Start building choir. And then from there, we can also start building the opening ostinato again. And I can do that in this rhythm. That might not be a very bad idea. And maybe in the celli, I will... So now the double basses play the old rhythm. Dun, 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 and the celli go on with the opening rhythm. And I want to know what these sound like together. And then we'll add bass clarinets, bassoons, etc. Um, yeah, and then here we also need bass clarinets. You'll stay in the old rhythm. And here I'll repeat as well, but maybe at some point it will be like a 
uitschieter, we call it in Dutch. And I have no idea how we can translate it. And then this needs to go to measure trim. And this, yeah, this just needs to repeat. And I also want to add bassoons here. This is staying, it's, it's causing a bit of a painful note, but I quite like it actually. Gusty double bassoon is an octave lower. This still feels like a second or inner voice. Oh, changed key switch there. <laughs> Let's try this now in the end. And I think from there I'll double the upper violin thing in clarinets with the same doubling technique that we used earlier. And then the measured tram is going to legato from there. Let's see if we can again add a second voice. All right, they don't have to move with the same rhythm all the time. Just this note is weird, so maybe I'll just make this a longer one. Let's see how that sounds. That's better. And I think I'll let this come back as well. Over here, let's just, yeah. Maybe this is also nice in some tremolos. I like it, it's very mysterious. And then the other tremolo can come in from there. And that's how your IDs evolve. We have some more emphasis on this counter movement. Just gonna try this in context with everything. I like it, but it needs to be a little bit louder. It's a bit intense, but I just want to try uh, that sound one time. So I think I need to have it double time ish. I think it needs to be. And it fit better with the chords. I'm just going to put it up. And then I think I'll repeat it. I'll just put in the notes and then that it's there in the structure and I remember it for when I get back to this later. Right, it's there. It's not polished. But it's there. And it has kind of a military thing, so maybe if this works as well. And I think, yeah, from here. Not sure if this is the one. Maybe this just needs to be on the ones. And then something else does the rhythm. Maybe it's too much, but I'm just gonna try it for now. Okay, wait. It was a very, very low now. Maybe I just need thumbs. I 
like the ominousness. <laughs> That's not a word. There's something else we can use there. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave it there. This section is starting to go somewhere. Uh, it took a little while before I got this shimmering idea ready. Tried some things underneath, some things that worked and uh, some things that didn't. But I think we are set for a nice build up now towards that first choir melody. <laughs> So far, so good. Thanks again for watching. Leave a comment with how you think this piece is coming along and like and subscribe if you like this series. Thanks as always to my patrons, John Dennis, Matthijs Dierks, Michelo and Kyle L. And I will see you in the next one. I did not hate that.